Hello, welcome. This is Peter Gould, executive producer. And hi, I'm uh, Vince Gilligan, another executive producer. I'm Bob Odenkirk. I play Jimmy McGill. And Gene. And Gene, and right Gene, here. That's right. And this is Tom Schnauz. I'm uh, these fools. Let me write and direct this one. <laughs> Don't know why they did that, but this is uh, episode 201, Switch. And it came out great. Came out great. Back in the old Cinnabon. What's wrong with the color? <laughs> Adjust your TVs, Adjust guys. Your TVs. <laughs> My TV is broken. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, Bob. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this to you, but I remember the there was a day in season I one. This. I love this. Would you want this person beautiful. to serve you? That's <laughs> it's a good great, question. I'm sorry, I didn't and mean that to was really hanging there in the Cinnabon. I saw it. You I have like, such I a great this. eye for these it. details. I love it. But Bob, when you were learning to make Cinnabons, yes. you remember that day in sure. Albuquerque in and season one. I, I, season one, and I thought, oh, oh what's what's wrong, with Bob? He seems he seems so low, and then I realized. It's not Bob. It's Gene. No, that's right. You were in you were character. character. Yeah. Sure. I'm not that good of an actor. <laughs> I have to stay in character. You're an amazing actor, my friend. No, I, amazing I mean, I mean, actor. Seriously, I do. I do, though. That's actually uh, something I've thought about a lot. I've talked about it before, too, which is the notion of, like, wouldn't a really good actor not have to stay in character wouldn't wouldn't if daniel day lewis was really good wouldn't, yeah. i talk about this That's, wouldn't he be able to put yeah. a hat on and be lincoln and then take it off and be himself yeah instead of wearing a stovepipe hat yeah, but you know, I, to, like, I have the to be alley and whatnot, i yeah. have to, i do try to stay in the mood of the character and in the world of them because i feel like i have i i don't think that's uh so easy I'm, for I'm me with you. I'm but with you. um and gene is a bummer his life is a bummer, um, but I love him, poor fella. <laughs> Krista and Raquel are, yeah, are, are, are Cinnabon employees. They actually work there. And they were in the uh, uh, pilot as well. They did yeah. a, they're very sweet young ladies. They do a wonderful job. They were great. Cinnabon's been great to us. They've been great and they did some us. great it's, improv, too. I said, because when you're standing out there waiting for Gene, we didn't use a lot of it, but I had them you know, just make up some dialogue and talk to each other. And they were actually really, really good. I was, they, I, I really liked them. They're talented young women. They're very sweet, very sweet. Oh, this women. thing, this door. Oh, yeah. Talk about that. That, uh, we could never get the timing right on this, on this, on the wedge coming out of the door. And, Because uh, it had a little piece of fish line on it? Yeah. yeah. And, you didn't uh, use the version where I slammed into the wall. Oh, uh, I was so worried about Bob. Full he, body. he was going, I was <laughs> like, he, you were limping because your knee went into oh, that man. thing. My knee was like, huge for months after that oh man really yeah Jeez. like that's so weird right it didn't hurt but it had this like bulge in it he went flying out the door but that wedge could never come out and they digitally erased the the line but also stopped the wedge in a certain place that where this where it stops on the screen is where it is not where it stopped in reality yeah. i'm just a, i love that people who watch this just get it like you guys uh, trust the audience so much to pay attention and I think they appreciate it. Um, but, you know, they they see this sign and they know that he's thinking, I don't know if I want to interact with the police. <laughs> and that sign is an exact, and I mean exact, right down to the, <laughs> the, the, the tears in the bottom, an exact copy of a sign that's in the stairwell of our building in Burbank where we have a writer's room and our post-production offices. And so we just, I think Peter took a photo of it with his iPhone and, and emailed it to, uh, to, uh, cause it's just so weird. It just it, kind of, it's so weird. And, yeah. and we would have never, yeah. we would have yeah. never known it. Yeah. If if Gordon Smith hadn't started taking the stairs every day, yeah. so now we all take now we, we all, all take, take the, the stairs. stairs up six stories, and it's like and that's our only warning. exercise. It's kind of a warning. Right? It is it's like yeah. don't use this fucking door. Yeah, God that's damn right. It, or we're gonna or call the, the goddamn well, cops. Well, and we're you know have why? To explain why you needed to use this. People door. must have used it too many times, and they're give me yeah. a break. Yeah. I don't want to have to call the cops. Yeah, yeah. The, this is a this set, is, by the way. Is this is the this is. The factory location where Nacho and Price meet. Right. Uh, we also used it, it the the uh, the factory in episode one hundred and nine Pimento last year, but back in the factory there was this room that uh, our Tony Fanning and our all our great sec that deck added the wall with the graffiti, um, and just made it and they added added that door at the back that uh, Bob was considering pushing through. That was not a real door. That was just a plug they put uh -huh. in there. So this is uh, this is the same day we shot Price and Nacho at the factory. We came, we ran back here and did the, all this uh, interior stuff. You're nice. very, nice. they are very efficient. That was a big day. Was this, a big day. by the way, we have to mention that the uh, the maintenance guy is listening on his headphones to friend of the show, 
Rich Eisen. Hey, Rich. Hey, Rich. Uh, Ruben Muller plays the janitor, does a nice job. Very yeah, funny. Great face, great face. And I love that we can get away with a shot like this, this weird meandering you know, dolly into a wall. Like, what the hell are we? <laughs> well, I, what ne- what TV station would allow this on their air? I, I, weren't we? Th- we were thinking of uh, The Shining. Oh yeah, we? this was. I, a, was, I oh, had Antonioni and uh, not. Oh, really? uh, oh, you are classy. La, La Ventura. Oh. Uh, oh, I was thinking of, there's some shots from there. I think it's actually I mentioned that in the script that this uh, this kind of weird you know drifting shot that goes into this close up. Man, you are classy. Classy, <laughs> this classy, is new, classy man. This is a new side of you. Classy man, except you haven't heard the audio commentary for episode eight yet. No, yeah. so, no but you know, stay tuned for that. Repetitive. Make sure you have to listen to them all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we are. We're, we're picking up where we ended. Uh, Season one. Kind of, We go back in time a little bit before he drives away uh, and meets Jonathan and the uh, uh, Mike in the booth. Uh, we pick up this moment that we didn't see. Yeah, we saw him stop, think, and then it seemed as though he turned around and left. But you guys inserted this interaction. Because when we started breaking the season and talking about would he leave, would he just drive away and leave Hello. Kim hanging there? Because Kim, Kim went out on a limb for him. And he, he, knows, he knows that. He knows at least that uh, yeah. it was her recommendation. I mean, in the writer's room, oh. we went over and over this. Oh, this is Ed Bigley Jr. Ed, Ed Bigley, Bigley. Jr. God bless you, Ed. Ed's on another one of these audio commentaries. He's and, a and, and I have to mention that the bag he's got on his shoulder is actually it's belongs Mark to Johnson. Mark Johnson. Yeah. Nice detail. Yeah. And that's uh, it's his it's his personal bag. And it's why was that? Sienna's. We needed a Jesse bag, and we didn't. Yeah. We just, none of them looked right. None of them looked right. And, and then, then this Mark look. was carrying that around. They were like, "God, we let's do at least contribute something to the show." Mark. Yeah, my God, yes. Ugh. So what's going on? I just um, <clears throat> listen. Here's the thing: if I take this job, does that mean the two of us? I mean. And Jesse Innes. Now, Bob, you and Jesse go back a little bit, we don't you? We go back a ways. <laughs> Jesse Ennis, whose hand I just shook, last oh, yes, time I was on camera right. with her yeah. was about 18 years before. She was four years old or no. four months old. Wow. Yeah? Yeah. She was a – it was me. It was Mr. Show. And if I'm not mistaken, it's the one that opens where the p- parents are talking about how they're depriving their kids of attention or in some way fucking their children up so that the children will grow up to be great people. <laughs> <laughs> you know? uh, and, and she was a baby, a little kid. And uh, I played her dad. And uh, that was the last time we were on wow. screen together. And it was her talk- first job in show business. I this girl it. right here, uh, and she's... The reason she was in Mr. Show was because her father is John Ennis, a great actor and um, a great friend of ours, mine and David Cross's, and he was a cast member of Mr. Show and with Bob and David, the show we just did on Netflix. But that is amazing. Unbelievable. And then I have all these scenes with her. And John Ennis is so talented. we got to find a part for him. Yes, we do. Show. He's we a do. wonderfully John talented man, and the apple actor. didn't fall far from the tree. And just for people listening, Jesse... None of this story you just heard had anything to do with us hiring her. Yeah, we didn't know. I didn't, we didn't know. even. I didn't even know. Yeah. And we, we just she we we see a lot of good actors. I will say, and she, I, I, and we're like she's perfect. I got to go to uh, with Bob and David. Yeah. And I saw her. I saw her in but with Bob and David. And so oh, I, right. I think I think I threw her name into the hat. Oh, is that true? Uh, to bring her in. All right. Never mind and, what and I just sh- said. It was it was rank nepotism. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but we wouldn't have hired her if she wasn't great. I was hired to do a job. I did it. It's as far as it goes. Yeah. Well, I know what stopped me. And you know what? It's never stopping me again. Ciao, Caco. Mrs. Nguyen, it's a beautiful day out there. You should get out of this place once in a while, you know? Throw a Frisbee. Have some We fun. love the ladies. Oh, yeah. Ciao, Caco, ladies. Eileen Fogarty playing Mrs. Eileen Nguyen. Eileen Fogarty's great. Yeah. Mrs. Nguyen. 
And she, uh, in the first take, she she shouts at you in Vietnamese, and she calls you a motherfucker. Oh, really? <laughs> in the first take, and I went up to her, I said, what are you saying? And she says, I go, I'm calling him a motherfucker. I was like, no, you can't say that. I don't care if it's another language. <laughs> so she ends up calling you a dirty monkey. <laughs> dirty monkey, that's a good one. <laughs> I like Dirty Monkey. Dirty Monkey. Dirty Monkey's good. It's good to know the show's funny in Vietnamese. <laughs> <laughs> How many takes did you have to do with that? Oh, four or five, but I loved it. I love any kind of inappropriate behavior. It's fun to do it, get paid for it. And we can't photograph real water. It's like a union rule, so it has to be vodka. Is that yeah. what I was told? <laughs> yeah, a SAG. Yeah. It's, it's a SAG from rule. the 40s. <laughs> It's the this Bogart was... rule. <laughs> you know, there's there's actually, in that last shot, there's an invisible cut yeah. that Skip put in. Oh, there's that's a, right. He changed the timing Wait, just a what? little bit. Oh, you mean it jumped in? The, yes. Yeah, yeah when, when, you pull, when you pull the sign wow. off, there's a little tiny cut Amazing. in there. All right. At the risk of him yelling at us from the booth, let's just say it now. This is the wonderful Jonathan Pike. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Man, well, and he really is great. He really is great. Was, he's great. And he's a he's a beautiful person as well. Purposely, and Mark Prook and Mark, Mark Prook. Prook. And a lot the of the craziest. <laughs> now, how do you get a car like that? They they actually make that car. They do. That is uh, we I, added the flames. We added the flames and the spinners. And the spinners, the spinners and the little the little antenna. Oh, which, the the the, the, the antenna, antenna which which hits which hits the uh, All hits the, the top there. Yeah, I love the antenna. And again, our amazing back. effects people there's we saw the whole camera crew reflected in the side of that hummer yeah that they were somehow able to digitally remove i'm just stunned remove. that they're able to do stuff like that this was the very first day of production this was day one yeah. of season two right so yep this is the first this scene was we the shot, first scene shot yeah. and, and i was there and peter was there right. and all i remember about this day is it was nice being back but my stomach was really bothering me and i was like where's the nearest toilet and it was like 16 miles away that's right. You had to walk through the uh, the convention center yeah. to get to the can. Yeah, I didn't like that's, that. That's that's. We're just gonna each location. We're just gonna Come describe on, the toilet guys. conditions. Yeah, <laughs> we can spend some money on a parking space for a trailer with a toilet. This this Mark is so wonderfully funny. Uh, he was he was so he, he's just he's just great. Yeah, and, and if you and this of course Tom, he was introduced in your your episode last season, Pimento. Yeah, and you get to and you get to to, to work him with him some more. Yeah, he's he's fantastic, and, and I love him, I love him. He and Jonathan are such a great combination. And just to advertise, uh, you can also see him on a show called Decker. Decker, yep, which oh, yeah. is on uh, YouTube, and soon will be on Adult Swim as a as a. 20 minute Tim Heidecker's or, yeah. uh, show. Oh, okay. They're making a, a TV version of it. Oh, oh that's great. Right the third season. Oh, that's cool. Oh, and just to say it, uh, uh, we were saying we did this. We put the spinners, we put the flames. Just to, just to make it clear, it was Dennis, I, or I said that rather, it was, it's Dennis Milliken, our yes. transportation captain, and his guys, uh, Chris and. Uh, Sorry, I'm drawing a blank of Chris's last name. Uh, all, the, all the great guys who work for Dennis in the transport department found this vehicle and jazzed it up. I love the I love the the playa, playa. The license play. Playa. Now you guys starting up the story here in the writers' room must have been you had a clean slate from season one. You know, I could have driven. I could have gotten on the highway and driven to L.A. Or back to Chicago. And, you know, that had yeah. us. That has. Oh, that real hummingbird. Hummingbird. Real hummingbird. <laughs> <laughs> not that, added in digitally. Not, yeah, no. that actually happened. It, 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 where it is in the placement in the edit is we did a split screen to put it there, but it actually, this hummingbird just, You're just decided. You're the magic. No, I got to be, I got to tell the audience the truth. Uh, but this hummingbird just decided to stop in front of our camera and pause and then take off again. Oh, and then really? and then Kelly put it in the edit. I'm like, I like it, but what does it mean? I, I don't know. I Let's just leave it. It's a hummingbird. No. It's well, a good knowing you guys, season six will be about the hummingbird. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a spinoff hey, show. Remember that hummingbird? What if he's the it's, one? Who, it's a buddy like picture it. between the hummingbird and the fly. Shoot the whole episode from a drone. <laughs> yeah. So this, yeah. Uh, so that factory back there, that's where we shot the uh, the teaser scene with uh, with Bob in the uh, stuck in the in the dumpster room. Nice. And here we have Michael Mando. Michael Mando, Michael Mando. back again, yeah. looking incredibly sexy. He's a sexy, sexy man. I I, I love what I love Takes what he does in this scene. I know, yeah. We get mistaken a lot for each other. <laughs> I love the I love the high water pants. On the, uh, <laughs> and, and by the way, uh, uh, props to to Jennifer Bryant and oh, yeah. uh, Brian and oh, our uh, wonderful the wardrobe department. The watch, the matching you know, watch and sneakers, a and a prop that, department for the watch. Yeah, absolutely. That Mark is from Wisconsin. 
You know, when yeah. people do that accent or when they overplay, it's very easy to overplay that. I'm a Midwestern dweeb. Yeah. But uh, it comes honestly to Mark. Yeah. He's from Wisconsin and... And a very, just very sweet guy in yeah. a person. Just a wonderful, wonderful guy. Uh, got a wonderful, met his, met his wife, wonderful wife. Very, very sweet couple. Very yeah. good, good people. It's just naturally funny. And I, 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 he doesn't have, he, he doesn't try. He's not selling the jokes or if there are any. He's, it's all behavior. And I, to me, he's funniest when he's being authoritative. And then how about Mando? Also the sweetest so, guy on earth. Yes. <laughs> he's yes. one of the sweetest people. He's this Canadian guy. <laughs> that's nice. right. He's, he's Canadian. Ernest. He's, that's, he is totally earnest. That's right. Yeah. Where'd you get the name Daniel Wormald? Uh, Wormald is my uh, grandmother's maiden name. Uh, and I named him Daniel, hoping that uh, there would be some connection to a previous show in the future. Wormald Schnauz? Oh, good, good. No, he, her Wormald yeah. Yobbs. Wormald Yobbs? So yeah. You got Wormald Yobbs and Wormald, We got Wormald Yobbs. She has a horrible <laughs> lineage of names. That's pretty great. My poor wife that she married into this. She had a nice normal name. The and Wormald now she's Yobbs Schnauz clan. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I try, remember I tried to use Yobbs in an X-Files episode, and the director was like, that's not a real name. I'm like, yeah, sorry, that's <laughs> my grandmother's name. It's boy spelled backward, right? It's or almost. <laughs> it's a boy. Boy. Uh, it's anyway, a boy. Yeah. everybody got sunburn except for me because I have like twenty layers of sunscreen on. But all the um, that's the way to do it. Was it Matt who got terribly sunburned on this? Oh, Matt Fate. Yeah. Oh. And the he prop was in department the water all day. Oh and, yeah. I mean, just horrible. What a yeah! Just what a pain in the ass trying to. Keep this draft in place with, and, with fishing line and oh yeah, there's all kinds of a digitally erased fishing line <clears throat> yeah. in place there. Yeah, but when we saw this pool, I absolutely I love the shape of it. I wish the so bottom of the pool looked like, better, like but because uh, throughout the whole thing, when I was scouting, I was like, look at all the, just all these try to as many geometric shapes as possible. There's the round mirror and the round yeah uh, the square uh, pictures on the wall, and there's this, and then I saw this you know. Flowing weird river pool, and I was like, "Oh, we gotta have, we gotta have this." This just says so much about where Jimmy is now in his state of mind. It's 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 terrific pool. It's yeah. terrific. you know, Bob, you said something earlier uh, that the way the last season ended, we could have gone anywhere. Yeah, and that that had us stuck for the first couple of weeks. I bet. And then we we kind of landed on the fact that Jimmy comes back to to really make things right with Kim right. and to check and to see if he still has a shot with her. If you really want to talk, I'll be in the bar. The whole season grew from that seed because this really is the, uh, the season of Kim. This was, we, we, yeah. uh, we started understanding how important she is, uh, mm-hmm. to Jimmy mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and man, you guys are so great together. Yeah. You were great together last season, but I, I don't think you had scenes like scenes this long together. These, these long sustained scenes. And this is, this is this is a classic. This is a long. Kelly Dixon yelled at me because of how much uh, Kelly. Great Kelly, Kelly Dixon edited this episode, but she yelled at me because of how much footage there was. Yeah, nine hours much, of footage too for much this footage? one scene. Really? I don't know. No. This is a long, long scene. It's a long, long scene, and uh, it really needed these varieties. We of, shot this for two uh, days. It's great. It's a good, yeah, great. It's the really entire uh, the entire bar sequence uh, from this to the to the booth where yeah. Ken Wins takes you guys was uh, over a two day period. The same. Same location where in season uh, one, episode 102, where we did the breadstick scene. That's right. That's right. That, that, that's rem- purposeful. It's supposed yes, to be the same. It place. is supposed to be the same place. Yeah. I remember Michelle uh, McLaren said it, once once she saw that location and she knew we were going to shoot. There, she said, okay, this is this is a different world from Breaking Bad. This yeah. is a Jimmy. Jimmy can go here. This is a, a location you wouldn't have seen. Oh, because Walter the, had no money. You, you wouldn't have. It's or, it's you know. yeah. It's Walt had no money, and it's also just it's kind of. On screen, there's something kind of slick about it. You know, it's it's it looks wealthy to me anyway. Have a future. I mean, where did that come from? And we cheated. This is not connected to that that pool location. Is a whole other area. It's yeah, where a, is that place? By the way, that's like a, a casino or somewhere. No, uh, it's a resort. It's a resort. resort? Uh, I don't think it's, it's a casino. Casino. No, you're but right. You're right. It's, it's a, a nice resort. Yeah. It's a very nice resort. I'm drawing a blank it's on the name up. now. Sort of northwest. Yes. Yeah. Northwest. 
It's nice. I, I think it's uh, it's you pass it when you're going out to the the big uh, chalk cliffs, white chalk cliff uh, place. It's a really nice resort. But so, this, yeah, is, so this, this is in town. This is this is in place. town, and we kind of do we uh, our our set Tony Fanning and all our set deck crew added those walls outside the windows because there's. There's a busy road out there. Oh, okay. there's, there's a parking lot. And there's a parking it's lot with a, there's a strip mall it's, out it's, there. It's in a strip mall. Yeah. Wow. This, this this beautiful bar is in a strip so mall. So we added these walls to make it look like uh, it could be possibly part of this resort. Nice. Right? Keep them up. The magic of the movies. Nice. You two are so good at yeah. this. Yeah, this is a long, this is a long scene. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if, Bob, this is your first scene back. For season two, yeah. no, no, we shot. Yeah, you in the hallway meeting Cliff. That was your that was your first mm. scene for this episode. Yeah, that was challenging. It's always challenging getting back into it. I mean, I, I, it was tough. It's like a circus freak minus the fun. That one's even worse. Who's giving you these? Please do me a favor. And Kyle Bornheimer is so funny here. And Ken you wrote, you wrote such wonderful. <laughs> asshole dialogue, Tom. I have to think you've got an inner, yeah. an inner scuzzwad. This is as much as you hate my Twitter feed, Peter. This a lot of this stuff. I mean, some of these jokes came right off of my. I, I know I used the term deathbed queef somewhere in my, my Twitter <laughs> feed and it made it into his, into his rant in the background. So uh, he, Ken Wins, of course, was in a classic Breaking Bad episode, Cancer Man, in season one. And so uh, good we, we needed a we needed a douchebag for uh, for Jimmy to show his skills on you know show show uh, Kim what he's talking about yeah and uh, we thought well let's why not use Ken Wins he's a you know again this is we're always fighting this urge to throw every Breaking Bad character into the into better in the world of Better Call Saul but this was an opportunity where it felt like it really uh, we weren't forcing it it just kind of worked I, I love just how much Kim cares about Jimmy in this scene. You know, she's leaning forward. She's she's so... It, it, she's watching him really rooting for him to come around to her point of view. It's this is a, To me, it's a beautiful argument because these two people are both right in their own ways. I want to give a shout-out to the guy who plays the waiter, too. He's uh, Dave Racky. Yeah. He did a good job. He does a really nice job. I love, uh, I'll talk ahead here. He does, I love that little <laughs> smirk. He, it's it's not quite a smirk, that look he gives when uh, when Kyle's character says, hey, is this Bill right? And he says, yes, sure it is. It's, I love I love his reaction there. It's really nice. Hey, can we talk about who's working behind the bar? Yeah, there she is, Devin Spurgeon. Uh, the, the the bartender, the gorgeous bartender behind the bar, the uh, the uh, 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 star tender, as she calls herself. <laughs> Devin, we met her. She's a friend of the show and a friend of Breaking Bad as well. She is, we met her in uh, Omaha, Nebraska. She is uh, Warren Buffett's uh, unpaid chief of staff, as, as she calls herself. And she's a very sweet young lady who is a brilliant attorney and very, very funny. And we had to, we had to put her in the show. We, we didn't have to put her in the show. We, we had to put her in the show in the sense of it would have been a crime to not have her in the show. She and, wanted to play a dead hooker, but we said we got a better part for you than that. And there's there's also a Warren Buffett uh, reference in the dialogue here, too. That's right. That's yeah. right. So a good friend the of the Oracle, show, Warren he says Buffett. The, uh, uh, Ken Wins uh, mentions the Oracle back there. That's right. I love this. I love you guys here. You guys are so... This the scam that uh, Jimmy plays. Boy, I'm surprised Kim goes along, but... Yeah, so We're starting to learn about her. That's you know you're right. That's this is a big moment yeah. because it's a huge thing. I think she's. I'm watching this and thinking that she's just as likely to walk away. Oh yeah, <laughs> more Absolutely. likely. But there's it's something in Jimmy that she, you know, this part of Jimmy, she loves. I mean, I always I've said it in before in other interviews. The billboard scam from season mm -hmm. one. Jimmy does this big outrageous thing and. Everybody's watching at HHM, and she's the one who smiles. She's right. watching this. And she has a smile on her, on her face, and that's uh, you know she enjoys this part of uh, Jimmy McGill. As much as she's uh, kind of standoffish here and disapproving, but she's watching him and just like, what is he? What the hell is he doing? I love your delivery of the line, uh, money printing machine too. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you three guys, and, and Kyle is so great. You three guys are so great together. Kyle's Kyle's character, uh, Ken Wins, is the guy you love to hate. He's just mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's so much fun. Yeah, that's because that was guys. the trick here. Is uh, you want it, you just wanted somebody who deserved this, who deserved this treatment. If they're going to rip somebody off, it's like you want the guy 
You want to be rooting for our guys. He's uh, like an evil Don Draper <laughs> or eviler Don Draper. There's something about him. He is so smooth. And then, you know, meeting Kyle, he's not like this at all. A oh, very sweet guy. Yeah, yeah, very, very, very nice. sweet guy. They're just, yeah, just an excellent actor, as all you guys are. Yeah. And a shout out to Phil, uh, Phil Palmer, our, our on set sound recordist, because you see that wall, that great water wall in the background. That was a giant pain in the ass, is my understanding, to, to record these, all this dialogue. For these angles, we did, we were able to turn it off for these like shots facing this way. But, uh, but yeah, some, when we're facing yeah. it, yes. Yeah, so Sometimes his, something his, looks great, but it makes hard, sound recording very hard. Yeah, his sound work is amazing. Yeah, it really is. the tried and true. Of course, you might be putting your cash in. Because his uh, his recordings are so clean, and he does such a good job getting the dialogue. It allows us to bring the other sounds of the world up, and to 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 give more of a feeling for the, for the whole world. I hope I hope you guys listening to this have also heard the episode. Uh, because I'm guessing most of the folks who are listening to this probably have bought the show somehow, and so they can listen to the the full soundtrack, which is uh, which has uh, so much more complexity than even what you can hear uh, when it's broadcast or through satellite. Absolutely. Oh, and coming up here, you'll see Devin again, the lovely Devin, pouring uh, a couple, three shots of uh, Zafiro and Yeho. Which, of course, you know, uh, guys watching this who uh, I figure most people listening to this have watched Breaking Bad. Not necessarily, uh, not anymore. Yeah, you know, it that's used true, to be that anymore. way. Well, if you haven't, uh, spoiler alert, it's a very important beverage uh, in the history of, uh, or at least in one very important episode of Breaking Bad. Giselle. Giselle St. Clair. Ah, lovely. Please, sit. I won't bite. So, Victor with a K and Giselle, exotic names. They're Dutch. Well, bored to be precise. Our father's side of the family is from South Africa, which is where... So, Bob, I have to ask you, uh, you guys, I know you and the rest of the cast will get together on the weekends to mm -hmm. work on some of these longer sure. scenes. What is that? What is that? If we were a fly on the wall, what would we see when you're working on a, a scene like this? I mean, you know, everybody's a pro and... Everybody wants to do a good job, and we're all very aware of the time constraints of the of shooting all this and, and the amount of time we have. So we want to get ready so we can do a good job and not feel like, oh, I need more takes. I'm not doing it yet. And so it's just about warming up. But, you know, people show up, and usually they know their lines even to those rehearsals. Wow. Yeah, and then we um, – the other thing is it's really helpful to um, – to kind of move through, there she is. Yeah, they're dead. Devin and, and Zafiro. And Zafiro. It's just to, to to physically move through the scene uh, as you learn it, because you kind of it, it's weird. I think your brain memorizes the lines, so just sitting down and sitting next to Ray instead of just doing the line, you know, like walking around alone in my apartment. You know, it's to to act it out and to to sit into those locations and try to approximate. That's why sometimes we'll ask for the set like how it's laid out. Oh yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, it's, we've done that once or twice asked what's the layout of the set. It it's just going to help you to to know the world and know the sense. scene. Yeah. So, you know, we just get to it. We do our best and I mean, we've had the guest actors in. Um, I'm sure he came to a rehearsal, and we've even had the directors come by if they're doing prep work sometimes, and they can come by and be a part of the rehearsal. But you know, it's all about just trying to do a great job. Here. Is there such a thing? Have you ever reached a point of saturation where there's like there's too much? Do you do you say to yourself, okay, I think we got it. I don't want to do it anymore. Otherwise, it'll be too much rehearsal. Have you ever? And we probably never have that much time on the, on a TV yeah. show. Yeah, probably never gets to that. I, I suppose it's possible. No, right? I think it is possible. If, if the scene isn't too hard, you can you could probably also if a scene demands a lot of emotion. Yeah. You can't really go there ten thousand times. Ah, uh, yeah, I bet. You, you just kind of are, are etching it in yeah. and saving it up. Saving for so doing it like on that day. Yeah. But mostly you kind of can't do too much. Gotcha. I mean, the more you do, the better. It's just you don't have to think about what you're saying. So it's doing practice laps at Indianapolis, but yeah. doing them at 180 yeah. miles an hour instead of yeah. 205 or yes. whatever. And yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely. In fact, you have to catch yourself. Here he is. Ah. Yeah, the, yeah I love that. I love it's that. It's a wonderful they moment. Do a good, yeah, it's good. He's probably because that 
that waiter has done that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, he's, like, he's had many people go, wait a second. So how much was yeah, that? Yeah, how much was that? Also, the guy was a douchebag. Hey, wait a second. Yes. Oh, uh, did I get nice. it? I don't know. I actually, did. I acted like I did. You that acted was, like you did. That's good. That's what great <laughs> acting is, great, people. This, this uh, is by the, the way, most romantic moment we've ever done. Single cutest, sexiest smile I've ever seen in oh, motion God. picture history. She yes. is so adorable here. Ah. And the lighting is so great. But it's ah. just like. <laughs> Tremendous debate about do we show the kiss, do we not show the kiss? Yes. Oh, we talked about before it was even written that we shouldn't, yes. right? Yeah, but. Uh, but it felt like you got, got, you got, got to. You got to. Yeah, no, you're right. You <laughs> got to. How much to show? So Once the, and how much to show? Room. Yeah. You can't be so coy all the time. That's your <laughs> That's right. number one comment on the internet. Coy? Oh, is that true? Uh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you, you don't, you don't Vince anything, anything about the internet. He'll believe it. He doesn't, yeah, he doesn't that's go true. on there. Yeah, no, true. it's it's actually not true. It's what I would write as a fan of the show. Bad, too much coyness. Get these two in bed. Come on, let's get to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is this is such a beautiful scene. Yeah, this it, is it, super it, cool. You know, I've had people, a couple people, ask me. Oh, they they improvise this right, yeah, and no. because it just feels so natural feels so and real. so relaxed. <laughs> But and the answer is no. It's it was actually, written. It's all written. Completely yeah. scripted yeah. exactly yeah. the yeah. way we're doing it. Yeah. Everything just, I do is scripted. People are always telling me, you must yeah. improvise. You must have improvised. I don't improvise a word. And I You do it. We it. do. You do it every we once do, in a while. We you ask add. you to. Yeah. Right? And you do a wonderful. Do one, yeah. And, we, and, you're, and you're wonderful Absolutely. at it. Obviously. I'm really into trying to do this. I know I don't do it exactly the way it's written, but I really want to do it exactly the This is the last shot we filmed for this episode. And and we love you for it. A we puzzle. love it. Absolutely. It's like a cool puzzle to try to. It's not that hard, but that's a keeper. That's a great shot. That was a great shot. I really like. Who who came up with that shot? I know it wasn't you. It is storyboarding. <laughs> I have storyboards. Proof. I did not draw them after the fact either. They were... <laughs> My storyboards. I need to put the camera here. <laughs> Screw you guys. I'm going home. <laughs> Nah, you're a great director, man. You really are. <laughs> First thing you ever directed professionally, not not talking the student film that I shot for you. That was that was a fun experience back in the 1980s. Yes, but, 1987. Uh, 1987. No. Down really? in Surf City, New no. Jersey, yeah. yeah. But uh, the first uh, first professional job was, uh, what was your first episode? Say of My Name. Man? Say My Name. Band. Which, and you, I'm just like, fuck, I got to hire my best friend to... <laughs> He's, he's bugging me, bugging the shit out of me to direct, and uh, I gotta fucking let him do it. And this is gonna suck, and I'm gonna, who are we gonna? And I'm watching this thing. I'm like, God damn, why didn't we think of this earlier? What a great idea I had to have time to direct. <laughs> uh, you're you're natural. Both of you, you guys are. are. Good. Yeah. yeah. And Bob's a great director too. He's not directed this. Well, show. got a bunch of directors. I've here. done it. I'm looking forward to seeing your new movie. I'm annoying to the director. I didn't direct my new movie, although I, <laughs> I did a lot of things. But you just did to, to the credit of the director. Oh, we okay. shot it on digital, and so in post we were able to change shots. It's pretty uh, there's another uh, Breaking Bad callback here. We have uh, Daniel Alex uh, Baker. This is Officer Sanders. Alex Desert. Yeah. Alex Wait. Desert. How do you pronounce Stoney his name? Oh, Stony Westmoreland. I know. I want to. Yeah, or or Desert. But our Breaking we Bad callback. Apologize, Alex, if we're pronouncing Don't your name wrong. All cops yeah. know. But and Stony Westmoreland. Stony Westmoreland is our Breaking Bad uh, callback here. He was in episode 303. Officer on the left. Is Guys, Stoney. this is the second crime scene that we've been to in this show yeah. where the cops are like. Nobody in particular you can think of. Because of the mess, right? Yeah. They're like, okay, wait, who? It's That's what throws them, right, is the notion of, like, what criminals are here to vandalize, primarily here to vandalize, right? I mean, he's saying they, yeah. right, they're just. Well, it's the mention of the money. Uh, price makes this slip up. Is about, that what it is? About losing yeah. money, which gets them thinking about, well, what were they searching for? And, and, and the way he reacts, uh, how much money? He goes, uh, uh, you know, never mind the money. And that, that that's a real quick And then the giant Hummer in the driveway. And the giant Hummer in the driveway. Oh, yeah. And this, this guy. Yeah. This is, uh, yeah, Mark Brooks uh, is an easy connection for me to, to the baseball cards because I 
I usually, when I'm having sex, I either think about Mark Brooks or baseball to stop from finishing yeah. too soon. You yes. too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. I thought you meant to. Oh, you're okay. No. Oh, that's <laughs> mean. Mark is, Mark's a sweet guy. No, that's, Mark's yeah, a sexy, no. sexy man. Don't oh. <laughs> baseball, I get. Yeah. Now, does Mark know baseball? I don't know. Did he have to? Was this hard for him to learn? Or he he of? knocked it out. He came in. He knew it all. I, I don't know how much he he knew beforehand about baseball, but he uh, I don't know. specifically baseball cards. All this minutia about the the ninety ten and the, and the and how did you re, how did you research I just all went that? On, you know, I I used this little thing called the World Wide Web. Yeah, I went on the internet and. It, uh, but I, I think we used Andrew Ortner uh, as as a consultant a little bit on this, didn't we? I don't know if we. Who was? I did not. Oh, okay. Never Maybe mind. it ran through Andrew, but uh, my dad's a big. I probably should have reached out to Andrew and my uh, dad George Gilligan loves this stuff too. Oh but, yeah, but, but you know you got all this stuff yourself in this case. I was. This was one of the scenes I was really worried about. This 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 level of mess in here. I was like, is this too much? Is this does this look real or is it? Uh, it's I remember of, Peter and I were there that morning, right. kibitzing, and I kept wanting to dump shit on the floor because, because <laughs> honestly, I, I think, I, unfortunately, that that it does often happen when, unless you're talking like David Niven cat burglar in your place. I think in real life they just throw shit everywhere because they're in there in and out real quick. But Alex on the right, by the way, uh, is uh, is in a, in a well-known uh, ska band called Hepcat. That's I right. Believe. And he's uh, both his and Stony on camera right now. I don't know if you finished. Uh, we might have been interrupting you, but Stony is the played the cop who tried very hard on Breaking Bad. He was a very Skyler to turn. Yeah. Very non-funny scene. Tried to get Skyler to to turn in Walt, and if she had in that moment. It would have been a very different ending for the series, but, uh, but she just couldn't quite bring herself to give testimony against her own husband, and understandable. But uh, but uh, Stoney did a great job. So he's the same character here, although I think we got the name wrong on the ba- on the. Uh, maybe. Did we? Yes. Yeah, I think yeah we made a few mistakes. Yeah, that's one of them. I think he's got a different name. Uh, oh, you're kidding? No, oh, no. I think, uh, on his name tag. Yeah, his yeah. name tag's different on Breaking Bad. Yeah, oh, but maybe out. he got married and changed his yeah. name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it baby. could be. Yeah. I didn't. Oh, I didn't realize there was an, an error there. I think. Yeah. I think I'm correct in the saying. I'm that. sure the fans. Now everything's check. ruined. Everything's yes. ruined. Uh-huh. Turn off your TV. Yes. Screw this. I'm leaving. Yeah. <laughs> so now the cops are gonna think about this. Yeah. And yeah. this is another thing. This, this pattern on the floor of them seeing that the couch had been pulled away. Oh, that's why he needed so much crap on the floor. Yeah, we yeah. wanted to be make sure that they noticed that this thing, this yeah. couch had. Uh, Oh, everything right. everything else is a mess, but this couch is like neatly in place. And there's a there's a divot cut out of the right. front where, where where obviously the couch had been moved. Little pie shaped wedge that was literally done by by angling the couch out, uh, pushing pull, the pulling stuff. the right. No, we did, we used out. a board because oh, uh, there's oh. actually space below the couch, so, oh, so right. that the garbage would not have moved like and, that. And by uh, the way, this is a tiny location. Yeah, this and, is a real and, house. And real credit to. Uh, to you and to Arthur and, and the whole crew for work. it's it's very tough to shoot in a small location. And then like we this. for this, it we is. added this fake wall here so we could get this this little hidey hole moment. So it, the space wasn't flo- f- uh, small enough. We had to put in a false wall. <laughs> oh right, <laughs> right. Uh, and also for yourself. Yeah, get this uh, particular shot inside. Was this done in the house? Or was this was done in the house. Yeah, oh, okay. we. Yeah, we could have, probably could have done this on stage, but it was just one of those things where we were there. Let's get it because you had all the junk in the background too. It would have probably been harder to recreate. I see he's cut out a bearing stud that are just to hide his shit. <laughs> the whole roof's got to collapse <laughs> in his house. That's, uh, that's next season. Back in the pool, yeah. We shot all this one day. We had we started later in the afternoon so we could get the you'd sell you'd sell in all these shots. The sun is going down because when we got there. We put the crane up, and then there was this giant shadow. We so we were okay. We'll do the crane shots later. And by the way, I have to give credit to Cat Bardo oh, because such good Bob, makeup. your your sunburn here looks. It's not real, right? No, it's not real. No, no I'm it, no, fine. Yeah. I did not get Kelly Dixon, sunburn. our editor, thought it was you really got burned. Yes, she was very. She thought somebody about was going to get fired. Very good. <laughs> People did get terribly burned, oh. as I mentioned. I said, I've said it before. I'll say it again. New Mexico is a beautiful place, but it is designed by God to kill you. <laughs> Everything about it will try to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. The sun, the the altitude, the the rattlesnakes, the And these guys are great. They yeah, are. these two were great. 
Man, these two did a great job. Tom, well, yeah. why don't you tell us about this uh, this blue the blue outfit that this, this gentleman's is, I, wearing? Yeah, this is a this is a little shout out to uh, James Bond and uh, in Goldfinger, Sean Connery is wearing <laughs> this. this exact robe. <laughs> and we thought, how much fun would it be to have? I want one of those. <laughs> it's a terry cloth jumper. <laughs> you should, we should sell those. Yes, better call Saul versions. Better call. I Although I don't know if we can rip off another movie and sell, <laughs> yeah, <but just>, <laughs> sell their prop. <laughs> homage. The word is an homage. <laughs> it's an homage. It's an homage. An homage to Goldfinger, and that's of course what he's wearing in Miami Beach. Oh yeah, he's got the shorty robe. The shorty robe. It's, it's, so it's wonderful. He's a, I'm drawing a blank, but I'm not seeing it in our pa- pages here. That these two actors, uh, they did a wonderful job. Yeah, they were great. I'm, I'm sorry, folks, but you both uh, were wonderful. They're very funny. Yeah, he auditioned for the uh, janitor role in the beginning, and we thought, well, he'd make a great uh, rich guy uh, yeah. for, for uh, Jimmy to, to, to target later on. And, and coming up is, is one of my favorite bits. I love that when this... he gets rid of the cigar ash on his – I'm sorry. And then your favorite bit coming one up? One of my favorite bits in the whole episode is right here where we just sit and watch Jimmy – yeah, think, this is so much and, a – And consider. I'm not – comp- Bob, this is – uh, to me, that's this true yeah. – it's beautiful movie acting. I'm not comparing just, this to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, but this is this kind of thing is so inspired. There's a shot of Jack Nicholson in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's end. Nest at the very yeah. end yeah. Uh, before the, everything goes to shit the next day. When the window's open and he windows can escape. open, he can escape. Yeah. He's just sitting there and thinking and thinking. I just that has influenced me so much in my life. That particular shot, huh. I, I, I love that seen we that movie in years. It's I love great, that we do it here. Holds up. It's just and it's just it's Ain't so crystal clear. Out place, motherfucker. <laughs> One of the and greatest there's not a word said. Not a word is said. Skyman Crothers. Santa Fe, New Mexico. I, there we go. So. Because this was one of the things that we we, we spent a lot of time thinking about. Oh, is, this does is he that take music this job? I really loved. Yeah. You this know, yeah. They, this is music. so. And then this magical shot, and then this whole thing, you guys. When I first saw it, I love. I couldn't uh, believe how much it felt like a dream, and how if you're watching it. Just calling back to the beginning of the episode yes. with these sh- these shots again, kind of. Yeah, this is Peter Gould's shot that we reused at the beginning of the episode. I just copied that for this. And then the slow mo there. And but this isn't you just like... walking slowly. I thought it was just good acting. <laughs> it almost feels like, is he imagining if I make this choice, what it'll yeah. be like, or uh-huh. you know, it takes a while as a viewer to go, oh, he's really. This is the choice he made. He's doing this. This is happening. This is a great location. Yeah, that uh, this is a library that uh, our set deck put all those those red chips outside to make it look more Santa Fe. We shot it, shot it in Albuquerque, and then there's we transitioned from a real location to Tony Fanning's great set on stage. Uh, right here, this is now we're walking into a set, and it matches beautifully. So uh, this is an amazing set. Uh, quite a lot of work and attention to detail and uh, went into this just a wonderful job and this is when you, you know doing this kind of stuff makes me nervous too it's just like it's wordless montage stuff it's like okay let's just shoot as much as possible and, and throw it at the editors and let's see what they can, t- can Man, do with it great. And, and it was so beautiful to watch the first time and so much more magical and dreamlike than it ever could have pictured it so many people, when they watch this, they know that there's an extra in the door, in the door outside who's not wearing any shoes. Right there, <laughs> she's, she has no shoes oh on. Oh my people, god! I never yeah. People have that. said to me, "Why doesn't she have?" I was like, "People are seriously noticing." People that? notice that. Like, why is that woman not wearing shoes? And I was like, "Well, when we we're shooting sound, they were clip clopping on the floor out there, and, and then it was sugge- it was suggested that our extras take off their shoes, and I nobody I didn't notice until we did put it in the cut that." <laughs> how do people notice it? I don't know. What? I don't know. I, I, well, it just are, to me, it just, it just, it just tells you how do they the laid back. Of a loose place. <laughs> if you gave me a million years of right. watching this episode, I would have never noticed uh, that. You know, right. I don't believe that because you have, you have, you've noticed things I, I like in it. editing that I couldn't believe. What about the painting, guys? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, t- yeah, yeah. Talk about that. I mean, this painting has this weight to it, this kind of poetic the guy is, falling, empty suit, empty clothes. Yeah. I, I don't. I apologize. I don't know the artist's name, but he is a uh, he is. A, I believe he's a New Mexico artist. Uh, that and I'm sorry uh, not to give him a shout out by name, but he's a very talented artist. That uh, 
uh, our production designer uh, found uh, found him. Uh, and this is actually Tony Fanning found his work. And the painting was, in fact, it's a mural that's uh, I I don't even it may it may have been destroyed since since it was since it was actually created, and the artist recreated it uh, as a painting that we could use in the office. And it is it's uh, you know it's one of those things that. Uh, there are so many ways to analyze it and, and to say what it means, but it just, it, the truth is it just feels right. Uh, and of course we were thinking about that when we were, uh, Tom, you must've been thinking about that painting when you shot some of those overhead shots in the pool or maybe you didn't. No, <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> Actually, you know, I, I think you may have turned one of the shots in the pool upside down. And that, I think that, that, yeah. that kind of united yeah, those two. Could be. And I'm as, as proud as I am of the opening that uh, that's that weird dolly in to the uh, to graffiti on the wall. I'm so happy that we could <laughs> that the episode ends on a flip of a light switch. Yeah, it's, just, yeah. it's amazing, you guys, and it worked for people. People were well. We watched this with an audience, and you, the second he saw that switch, they went, "Oh, like he's got to <laughs> throw it. He's got to throw it." Okay. They just know the character so well, and. It just created tension and excitement, and it was. Ah, what's happening? What did I do? Ah, it just yeah. can't help <laughs> himself. Did, did I turn off the security system? Did I? Can't help himself. Shit. I remember, okay, I'm, nothing. <laughs> but I don't even know if you're that word. I, if the whole place blew up, I, I don't know. Is it? What do you think? It, I it, think he's thinking. Huh. <laughs> I, think, yeah, I, I mean, think there's a guy on life support upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Todd Sofer was one of our yeah. teamsters, a uh, wonderful, wonderful guy. We all love Todd. Uh, and he, you saw him in a Breaking Bad episode. That's he was right, one of the two. Meat. Yeah, one of the two big guys. Uh, in the bathroom. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Brett Better Call Saul. He was on as well. He was yeah. the guy that, that brushed past you in the bathroom at, uh, at the Loyola's. That's mm -hmm. right. And also in a Breaking Bad episode. He passed away. Very sweet guy. But uh, great, great job, Tom. Right. Episode nice job, 201. Tom. I'm glad I had that great, great job, idea of having you direct for us. <laughs> it's, it it's, uh, Thank you, Vince. Well, Thank you know, you when, we saw, you, Vince. when we saw that last one, we knew you were the guy to open the season. <laughs>